Hey, what's up everyone? It's been a while since my last update, but a few things have happened in my life. Um, I got busy with school, I moved into a new place, I spent a lot of time at the new place getting things set up. And, uh, actually last year I, I, there was a bit of a time when I really wasn't finding too much stuff. I didn't feel like going to thrift stores, so I didn't really have much to show you, but... I've been getting back into the groove of things, and uh, as you can see, I set up a lot. Well, this is maybe like a third or so of my collection. There's these two shelves, and two more below it, the same size, full. Um, this is kind of how I like to have it. I want to have it set up with some of my prized pieces, uh, kind of angled out to uh, see the, the, the box art. The rest of the stuff is still packed away in boxes. I don't know what I'm going to do with it just yet. I think I'm going to go through and kind of take out the stuff I'm less interested in and put in the more interesting things. And maybe have them somewhere else. I need to get more bookshelves, that's for sure. This isn't any nowhere near enough. And... Yeah. Um, anyways, um, the pickup videos, uh, this episode, um, I figure to show you everything I've gotten since the last time, at least mostly everything I've gotten since the last time, will probably take about at least three videos, um, maybe, maybe more, maybe four, I think, actually, I'm going to do four. I'm going to do this one, which will be primarily console, um, game stuff, then I'm going to do another one that has uh, complete or just boxes of computer games that I'm going to pretty much go straight into my collection. Then I'm going to do a an eBay, well the, that one was going to be like a two part thing, it's going to be stuff I found at thrift stores and stuff I ordered off of eBay because I do have quite a bit of stuff that I order off of eBay. It's mainly going to be uh, the computer games. It's going to be some books uh, or some other stuff that I'm keeping for my own collection. Then I'm going to do uh, a pickup video where it's mainly stuff that I bought to sell, which mostly are jigsaw puzzles, uh, board games, um, stuff like that. And I know I did buy some uh, strategy guides that I don't have out here to show you just yet. Um, I actually recorded this video already, but I noticed when I was setting stuff down after showing the camera, I set it on my desk next to my microphone, which created a loud sound um, every time I set something down. So I wanted to redo it and set them off to the side more so it wouldn't make that sound and deafen everyone. Um, so to start out... Uh, let's do my NES game pickups. I didn't get a whole lot. Mainly because I, I usually don't find these. And when I do, they're stuff I'm not really, uh, no value or they want too much for it or something. But I did get lucky with some things. First up, first Dragon Warrior. This was 50 cents. Then, Time Lord, 50 cents again. Then we have 1943, which was $2. Um, and then the rest of these were all 99 cents a piece. Um, gotcha. Top Gun. Mario Brothers. Simon's Quest. Trojan and Ninja Turtles. Next up, let's go to uh, Game Boy related items. I got this lot of stuff at a thrift store, and I think I paid fifteen dollars for it. I don't really remember. It was a Game Boy Color in this carrying case. For some reason, they had put Monsters, Inc. for Game Boy Advanced in it. 
I think, um, I don't know if it was the person who donated it or the store employee themselves. Um, but that was inside the, uh, the Game Boy itself. This was inside the case. Tiger Woods uh, PGA Golf Tour. Then there was also a teal Game Boy Color with the battery pack cover. The battery compartment looks clean. I did not test this out yet. Um, and then inside the case as well was a copy of Pokemon uh, Blue. I believe this is a blue version. It's a blue cart, so that's probably a blue version. Um, that was a pretty good pickup. Then at a thrift store, not a, not a thrift store, I keep calling it a thrift store, a pawn shop, I got these three Game Boy Advance games. Um, they usually have Game Boy Advance games and uh, uh, DS games, like th buy three for 20. And I picked up Final Fantasy VI, Mega Man VI, uh, Battle Network, Cybeast, Gregor, and the classic NES Legends of Zelda. Then I picked up Gargoyle's Quest for a dollar. And this I picked up only because... I needed to spend ten dollars at this pawn shop to buy two other games that I'll show you later that were two dollars a piece. This was I paid more for it than I really wanted to, but it's still a good deal. Um, Mega Man Four for Game Boy, and I paid fifteen for it, which you really can't see because contrast is completely blown out on it. Um, then we have. Nintendo 64, GoldenEye 007. Uh, these next three I picked up just because they were 50 cents a piece. Uh, Scooby Doo Classic Creep Capers, uh, WWF Warzone, and Namco Museum 64. And then this one was in a storage unit that my sister had bought. Um, Zelda Ocarina of Time. The front cover art on this one is really shot, but the contacts doesn't they don't look too bad. I haven't tested this out yet. My uh, Nintendo 64 is still packed away. I haven't dug that out yet to test any of these. I haven't really tested anything that I'll show you today, but I don't think that it won't work. I think that it'll work. Then I got Mario All-Stars for Super Nintendo for 50 cents. The same time I picked this up, I also bought a fairly nice condition Super Nintendo controller. I mentioned that I bought that at the same time because this was $3 and I probably wouldn't have bought it for $3, but I figured that was such a good deal. Um, oh! I also got this for, um, it's compatible with Game Boy Advance, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Pocket, but it's a uh, Nyko AC adapter, new in the package. And then I got these plug and play games, mainly to sell. Um, a Namco it has um, Pac-Man and Dig Dug and other games on it. Then I got two of these Commodore 64 plug and plays. Um, I kind of intend to maybe try to mod these. Um, I believe you can mod them and put a, an SD card slot in them and then you can play any Commodore 64 disc image um, with these, which then I will probably keep one for me and probably resell the other, assuming I don't screw them up, modding them. Um, oh yes. Um, then I picked up this, a uh, Nintendo with one controller and the RF cable. No game inside. It was 15, which was a little high. For what I would have wanted to pay for it, but I picked it up anyways, just because my Nintendo 
it's it needs the uh, the the, um, the the pins replaced on it, and I haven't done that yet. And I thought maybe that one would work better, but I haven't tried it yet. Um, next up, this I picked up at a Goodwill. It's a 2600 game. Um, I picked it up at a Goodwill that had, I think it was like one or two 2600s in a box, and like a 5200 or a 70, 7600, yeah, 7200, 7200 in a box, but they were like 60, 70 dollars, 80 dollars, and I didn't want to pay anywhere near that for those. They also had a milk crate. Um, you know, like a, a milk crate, if you know what a milk crate is. It was maybe like a one by one by one box full of uh, Atari 2600 games. They were all $5 a piece, though, which is pretty ridiculous for most Atari games. But I dug through it, and I did find one gem, <clears throat> and that was Tapper. Then I uh, found at another thrift store. Sorry for that. Um, some in television games. Two of them, I uh, well, pretty much all of them. I looked looked online just to see if any of them were worth anything. And I kind of used that to go by whether or not they were rare, um, rarer to find. But I end up picking up a uh, bump and jump locomotion. And then two sports games, which inexplicably to me were actually worth some money. Uh, World Championship Baseball and Super Pro Football. Unfortunately, they were all cart only. There were no boxes or um, controller inserts, which sucks. Then I picked up... Where is it? Okay. A couple uh, Dreamcast items. First up, I saw this sitting in the um, electronics section of a Goodwill, and I thought maybe there's some more stuff. So I looked around, and I didn't see any games at first, but I found this, which essentially looks new. The um, the cord still wrapped up in a twist tie, and it comes with a uh, came with a receipt from where they bought it and everything else. Then I was still looking around trying to find some games or a system. I didn't ever find a system. I didn't find a system that day. But I ended up finding a stack of games hidden behind a like some look like somebody had buried them behind some 45s, like loose 45s all stacked up. And I dug through the games and I picked up the ones I thought were the best. Um, first up, there's Legacy of Cain Soul Reaver. Then there's Time Stalkers, Sonic Shuffle, and Sonic Adventure 2. Um, they also had a Sonic Adventure, the first Sonic Adventure, but there was no game disc in the case. Um, there was a demo disc for Sonic Adventure 2, but the game disc was gone. So. I didn't pick that up, obviously. Um, oh, I forgot about this. Kind of goes along with the plug and plays, but a tabletop Space Invaders from 1979. I'm thinking of keeping this for myself, but I haven't really decided yet. And next up, <clears throat> we'll do the PlayStation games Crash Team Racing. This kind of annoyed me. Um, it's medieval, but there's no manual, no front cover. Um, the back cover is there, but it's all trashed out on the, uh, the the spine. I don't actually remember what these discs look like. Usually I don't buy them if they look completely crappy, but apparently I bought this one when it looked really crappy. And there's it's the next rental game as well. But there's a game store not too far from me, um, maybe like an hour drive that can resurface discs, discs for two dollars. Then there's Crash Bandicoot Warped. Okay. 
I'm actually surprised I bought some of these with the way the discs look. They may have been whenever I was having a dry spell at the thrift store and I just wanted to buy something. But Spyro's Ripto's Rage. Uh, Digimon World 2. Spyro Year of the Dragon. And this was one of the two games that I bought Mega Man 4 um, to get. So I could spend $10 and use a debit card. Um, Intelligent Cube, which was only $2, which was really strange for that pawn shop because they've started... Every, uh, it's probably been the past year or year and a half they started looking up games. And, like, they have a Mega Man X uh, for Super Nintendo for, I think it's like $40 or $45. Um, then another PlayStation game. Uh, this one just in a little jewel case. Um, Super Puzzle Fighter 2 Turbo. Um, now let's go to... I have one Wii game. And it's not Sonic Colors. It's Mario Kart Wii. But, again, the disc is... really trashed up but again like I said I could probably get this resurfaced for two dollars and it would work fine <clears throat> then this is the other game I picked up to get the or the reason I bought Mar uh, Mega Man 4 it was Okagi uh, Shadow King not really worth much but I don't know I just wanted to buy it I guess I don't know. Um, Star Wars Battlefront 2, Spyro the Eternal Knight, and Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance 2, just disc only. Then we have a stack of GameCube games. First up, a disc only copy of Sonic Adventure 2 Battle. Then we have Sonic Adventure DX, Director's Cut, Sonic Adventure 2 Battle, Sonic Adventure 2 Battle, Mortal Kombat Deception, um, Digimon World 4, Mario Party 6. Some of these are uh, disc and case only, and some of the cases look really crappy, like um, Mario Party 6 looks sun-faded. <laughs> Mega Man X Command Mission. And F-Zero GX with a bonus of Sonic Heroes and Sonic Gems Collection. Then, next up, we have a few Xbox 360 things that I got because my brother-in-law's brother, uh, uh, Xbox 360 broke, and he, well, I actually have the, the, the broken 360 as well in another room but inside the bag with the games was FIFA Soccer 10 NHL 10 NHL 08 NCAA Football 10 Top Spin 2 and the best game Halo 3 then I they actually for some reason had NHL 12, NHL 12 for PlayStation 3 inside the, the bag as well. And the best part of that deal was I got one. If you can hear that, that's my dog playing with my cat. Sorry. Uh, two. And three 360 controllers. Which, like I said, was the best part of that. A um, few other minor things. Um, I got 
this Sounds from the Lighthouse, uh, the Bioshock 2 soundtrack on CD. Um, if I had thought about it, I probably could have found maybe the, uh, the LP of this, but I didn't think <laughs> when I was at that thrift store and I found this to go look in the, uh, the, uh, the record section. Um, then this, I just wanted to show you guys, um, because it's pretty cool. And I've had this for a while, but I, I think I found this before I started doing videos and I never thought to show you until now, but it's, a, a Famicom controller that is a clock uh, alarm thing. And there's like a little game inside that you play, I guess, on the screen. I can't remember. It's been so long. It does work. And like once you get to a high score, you unlock a different alarm for this. Finally, arguably saving the best for last, was I found a Mario Brothers Game & Watch at a thrift store. Um, I have not tried it yet, but the battery compartment is clean. I mean, it uses watch batteries, so uh, they those really don't leak. But... I haven't tried it yet, but it was only a dollar, which was amazingly amazing for that thrift store. Nowadays, they look stuff up, and they actually have printouts from eBay saying, oh, this was you know, whatever on eBay, but I just managed to slip through the cracks, and I picked it up. And I do believe that's it for right now. Um, so, unless I manage to smack stuff on the table and make really loud noises through the mic, um, this will be it for this video. And the next video I do will probably be, I'm going to say it's going to be my uh, thrift store uh, big box PC games that I picked up to add to my collection. Um, I hope you guys tune in for that and I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you all later.